Jesus always talked about feeding people. He was always about feeding people, always about feeding the hungry. And Jesus specifically talked about, you know, when he told Peter, he said, Peter, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. I'm going to teach you how to not just fish naturally, but I'm going to teach you how to reach humanity, to reach out and make contact with people. Today, I want to talk to us about making a difference. Being that difference maker in your life, being that difference maker in your home, being that difference maker on your job and in your community, that each one of us have been called to make a difference. Can somebody say, make a difference? Make a difference. You know, I preached years ago a message entitled, Can One Person Make a Difference? And do you know if it was just one person, you could make a difference? If it was only you touching one person, a difference can be made and how important each one of us are to God, that God wants to use each one of us uniquely, ourselves, our own gifts, our own abilities. Each one of us brings so much value, so much to the table that you bring something that the person next to you cannot bring. You know, God did not make any replicas. He made unique individuals with purpose that God engrafted in you, he put purpose in you, he put passion in you, he put desire in you that you could be that difference maker. Somebody say, make a difference. Make a difference. Some people may not realize, well, what does it really matter? Will I really matter? Do I really bring value? Do I add anything? Yes, you do, because we've said this many times, is that God made you and I so unique that we're the only ones that have our own fingerprint. No one else has your fingerprint. No one else can replica you. You are you. God made you so unique, so special, so powerful, and you add everything to be a difference maker. God needs difference makers. And, you know, and I was thinking about this weekend, thinking about all that we were doing and reaching out and Last night when they had us on the news and they're asking, why do you do this? Why, why, why is the church so involved in this? I mean, you did it last year and you're doing it this year. Why do you want to keep taking it to another level? Why do you want to keep it getting bigger and bigger? You know, and I thought about it. I did say it on the news, but I thought, but it's preparing the sermon for today is, you know what? We've been called to make a difference. We should make a difference in our job in our family, if, it's, if you're the only one in your entire family that is about purpose, about passion, about Jesus, then you are the one that Jesus has picked and hand-plucked out of that family to be that difference maker. You know, so many times, like, well, I'm the only one that goes to church in my family. Good! That's some of the most amazing thing that you can have that testimony and say, I'm the only one that serves God. I'm the only one that prays. I'm the only one that reads my Bible. I'm the only one that even has an interest of going to church or pursuing God. Praise the Lord. You are special. You are amazing. You are who Jesus is looking for because you're the one that's going to make the difference in that family. You might be young here today, young person. You might be a young adult, whatever the age may be. And you may think, I'm the only one of all my friends that goes to church. I'm the only one that does this, only one. That is so amazing. That is a plus. That is not a negative. That is such an added thing for your life, not a subtracted thing or whatever word you would use. I mean, think about that. So many times people devalue the one because it's not the many. But if one doesn't start, there can never be a ripple effect. The Bible says this one begat, this one begat, and they all through the begats in the beginning, somebody had to be the one to take that step or nobody else could follow. Followers don't follow followers. Followers follow leaders. Someone has to lead. If somebody proclaims that they're a leader but no one's following them, they're only taking a walk. They are not doing anything. They're not making an impact. Somebody says, well, I've been called to lead. I've been called to be a leader. Great. That is amazing. Then there should be people starting to follow you because leaders have to lead. To become a great leader, you have to first learn to be a great follower. Because if you're never a great follower, you'll never become a great leader. Somebody say, make a difference. You know, when Jesus was talking to Peter, he says, I'm going to teach you to make you fishers of men. 
You know, I thought about fishing and how important it is when somebody goes fishing. I'm not a fisherman. I can only know by watching fishing shows and listen to my brother, listen to people I know that go fishing. And I've tried to go fishing before. And the reason I didn't like fishing is I'm not real big in worms. I'm not real big in all of that stink bait. You know, they want to go get this bait. It stinks so bad. I just feel like puking right out there. I'm like, my Lord. They're like, go ahead and puke. That'll catch more fish. But anyways, that... But here's the thing. Fishermen don't go fishing without effective bait. So when they were talking to us, like, why would y'all do this? What's the whole purpose behind this? I mean, yes, we've been called. Yes, God has put us here to make a difference. We're not just to here be a light. We're here to be a blinking, red, beacon, flashing, bright light. We're not just here to be a little flicker in our community. No, we are to be a lighthouse, a city that is set on the hill, the Bible talks about. We should be the one that's bringing attraction, not a distraction. Come on, somebody that's going to make a difference, you don't distract people, you attract people. You're one that everybody else wants to get to know. You're the one that everybody else wants to hang out with. You're, you're the one they want to make sure is invited over. You're, you're at the top of the list. You're not the one like, well, I don't know about this one. I don't know about why, because people like to be around Make it happen, people. They like to be around difference makers, somebody that's making a difference in their world, somebody making a difference on their job, making a difference in their community. You know, there's all kinds of people. There's three kinds of people that exist, exist in society. There's those that uh, ask what's happening. There's those that uh, think about what's happening. And there's those that are making it happen. You know, I want to be a part of the group that's making it happen. I want to be around, you know, I, if I'm not the one making it happen, I at least want to hang out with somebody that's making it happen. I want to be around somebody that's going somewhere, somebody that's doing something, somebody that is taking territory, gaining ground. You know, I thought about it through the whole thing about us being here to catch fish. That's what we're called to do is to catch fish. God's job is to clean them. Our job is to catch them. We haven't been called to catch them and clean them. He says, no, you catch them and I'll clean them. You know, uh, old school church when I was growing up, they wanted to catch them and clean them. Take that earring out, cut that hair, pull them pants up. You can't wear this, you can't wear that, you can't look like that, get that makeup off. I mean, they just want, the, ladies had to have, uh, you know, shirts all the way up to here. They couldn't show no neck. No neck could be shown. I mean, it, it was such traditional because they didn't just want to let God do the work. We wanted to catch them and clean them. But you know, the Bible says God will clean them. God will touch them because if God don't change the heart, if God don't cause that heart to change inside that individual, nothing good's going to come out of the package to begin with. There's got to be a heart transformation. It's, you don't just renew your mind. You don't just put better thoughts. I'm just going to think good thoughts, good thoughts. No, heart transformation has to take place. They was asking news last night, and they said, you know, what are you? Why are you doing this? I said, well, I believe that this is our purpose. I believe God's put us here to make a difference in our community. And they said, why food? And I just pointed to the lady, and I said, just look. Cars were backed up all the way down. The police department was up there directing traffic. It was a traffic jam at the red light. The red light would change green, red, green, red. Cars just had a standstill. It was gridlock. Nobody could get around. I said, listen, look. Food makes a difference. It's the right kind of bait. <laughs> Listen, God don't want us just to feed people spiritually. God wants to feed them physically. You know what I learned years ago? That if you'll feed somebody physically, you'll have a whole lot better opportunity to talk to them mentally. <laughs> because they don't want to hear about Jesus until you show them about Jesus. See, we're not just want to tell people about him. We want to show them about him that the reason we do this the reason we have this heart the reason we give the reason we want to give back the reason we want to help people is because that's the love of God love always is expressed if someone says I love you then they ought to be able to express that they ought to be able to demonstrate their love for you and how many y'all know Jesus was a demonstrator Jesus was a difference maker I began to think of people in the Bible Noah Noah made a difference God said, Noah, you better build an ark because there's coming a flood. 
You know, back in that time, it had never rained before. They never even knew what rain was. Water come from beneath the earth. So they didn't even, they said, flood, what do you mean? It's going to rain. They used, and used the word, it's going to rain down. And so next thing you know, Noah's not even understanding, but Noah made a difference. Amen. Now, not everybody got on board with them, but think about all the animals that got on the board. They was thinking, Noah, thank you for being a difference maker. Because while others were sitting back wondering if it was going to flood, there were those that got on the board because they believed that what Noah said God told them to do was going to happen. And they got on board and they began to make a difference. You know, think about how God's called you and given you and I an opportunity in this hour that we're living in. Over and over and over, hundreds and hundreds of people last night were saying, it is amazing to see people loving people from all walks of life, from all background, from the high to the low, from the middle. Nobody at odds with nobody, thousands upon thousands of people, all after one vision, one heart, one go. Do you know that's what God wants for you and me? He doesn't want there to be divisions and splits and quarrels among us. He wants us to be of one heart, one focus, one vision, one go. And what happened last night was nothing that but a miracle. Because if you've been living and watching and paying attention in our society today, people can't get together over nothing. They fight over parking spaces at the mall. They fight over all kinds of things. Who took the last donut at work? People are arguing over all kinds of things. But listen, last night you saw hundreds and hundreds, and if you wasn't here, then we're going to be putting videos up like crazy because it was thousands upon thousands, even the cars in line. We had people on Facebook saying, you know what? I've been in line for two hours. I'm at least a half mile away. Is there going to be any food when I get there? And we're answering, nope, we just ran out of food. They said, well, thank you. I'm so glad I had this opportunity. This is amazing watching all the cars online. People were excited seeing such generosity of people coming together. Do you know that is nothing but the heartbeat of Jesus Christ? That is nothing but the love of God? That is nothing but how God expresses himself to humanity? See, each one of us has been called to be a difference maker. And maybe you can't get gather thousands together, but you know you can take from today and say, you know what? I'm not going to sit around and ask what happens. I'm not just going to tell people what's happening. I'm going to be a make it happen individual. Do you know where that starts with? That starts with you. See, I had to make a decision. You know what? I'm going to get up. Though none go with me, still, I'm going to follow. I'm going to make a decision that I'm going to get up. If i got to take it baby step by baby step, one foot after another, I'm going to choose today to be a difference maker. I'm going to be a light in this world that I live in. I'm not going to complain about the world because where you complain, you remain. Where you start giving praise, God will start raising. In other words, I'm going to be a difference maker. I'm not just going to sit around and do nothing. God, whatever he puts in my hands, if it's a little bit, I'm going to take a little bit because God multiplies the little. He don't multiply the lot. God takes the very little you have. If you only got, I only got five minutes a day, Pastor, then take that five minutes and make a difference. Maybe take five minutes out of your lunch and make a difference there. Maybe be the one that cleans the coffee pot, gets it ready. Oh, there's only one donut left. Let me go get some more donuts. Whatever it could be, be that difference maker. Be the one that's going the extra mile. Jesus said when you've already went one mile, go another mile. Some people are like, I've already been one mile. I ain't going another mile for nobody. No, listen, it, would you do it for yourself? Most people would go mile after mile after mile for themselves. I mean, for, for themselves, but yet they don't do it for others. Listen, I want us to be a church that makes a difference, not just in our community, but make a difference in your family. Make that difference on the job. Make that difference in your neighborhood. Be that one. You know, the other day, not too long ago, I went and mowed some people uh, in my neighborhood. You know, they wasn't mowing their yard. I could drive by and put a sign out, please mow, right on their car, please wash your car, something like that. But you know what? We, me and some guys went out there, and we just mowed it all. Finally, the neighbor came out and thanked us for mowing. I wanted to turn around, well, you could have done it. You got a brand new mower sitting there in the garage. But see, where I complain, I remain. But the decision is, you know what? Why not be a difference maker? Why not be one that just goes ahead and mows it and gets it done and quit driving up and down the road complaining about the one that's not doing it? 
Come on, somebody. I want you to look with me in Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. In Numbers chapter 16. In, um, in Numbers chapter 16, in verse 43, says, And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Get up from where you are in this congregation. And they ran, and uh, get up from where you are in this congregation. In verse 46, and Moses said unto Aaron, take a censer and put fire on it. And there from the altar and put incense on it and go quickly into the, unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For the wrath of God has gone out and a plague has begun. And the Bible says in verse 47, it says, and Aaron took... As Moses commanded, and ran out into the midst of the congregation, and behold, the plague had begun among the people. And he put on the incense, and he made an atonement for them. And where he stood, he stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was stayed. The Bible records that all Moses was asked Aaron to do and those that are helping him is to get to the altar, get to the place of God and get some fire on it. And the Bible says and when they ran out to where there was destruction, they ran out there where there was a plague, where death began to happen, decay began to happen, and where they stood, the Bible says they stood between the living and the dead, but where they stood, the plague had stopped. This, this guys, they made a difference because where they stood, they took and made a difference between the living and the dead. In other words, the ground they began to take while the plague was destroying everybody, when they got to the altar, they got the presence of God, and they said, you know what? I'm called to go make a difference. And then wherever the ground they took, the Bible said the plague stayed. In other words, it could not, destruction could not continue to take place. Do you know that that's something God's called each one of us to do? He's called us to be such a difference maker that once you and I come into the contact of the power of Almighty God, that when you go out with that fire, when you go out with that zeal and that enthusiasm, when you go out and you know that God goes before you and he makes the crooked places straight, when you do that, that the Bible says that the plague has to stop. There could be destruction all around you, but when you take that ground for the Lord and you decide to be a difference maker wherever you are, do you know that calamity and destruction and death and all of those things are going on negatively can stop? Because the ground that you take is holy ground. God told Joshua, wherever you put your feet, I've already given you the land. I've already blessed that land. See, where I decide to be a difference maker at, that God goes before me, God makes the crooked places straight, God makes a way where there was no way, he gives me favor, the Bible says he holds the heart of a king in his hand, God begins to turn things to make it work in my favor. He's causing me to have favor with those around me that everybody else doesn't have favor with. God will cause you to have favor with people that nobody else has favor with. People will start listening to you when they wouldn't listen to nobody else. You can be complaining about those teenagers in the neighborhood, but say, you know what? I'm going to get to that altar. I'm going to get in God's presence, if you would, and I'm going to get God's fire. I'm going to get God's passion. I'm not going with my passion. I'm not going with my thoughts, but I'm going to go with God's passion, God's purpose. And listen, nobody else has reached these teenagers. I'm going to be able to reach these teenagers. No one else has been able to talk to this group of people. I'm going to talk to this group of people. Listen, if God is for you, then who can be against you? The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue rises up before against you, you'll prove it out to be wrong. See, God's called each one of us to be a difference maker. Let me give you 10 wisdom keys of champions, people that chose to make a difference. Number one, champions decide to be so. Champions don't just are not born. Someone that becomes a champion is because they decided to be a champion. God don't make champions in the sense they're just born a champion. No, champions decide to be a champion. Number two, 
Failure only lasts as long as you permit it. Ten keys what people that decided that they're going to win in life, that they're going to be a champion. you got to decide to eliminate failure because failure will only last as long as you permit it. Any day, number three, any day that brings you closer to your dream, it is a go-winning day. Any day that you get closer to that dream, closer to that thing, you got to write that down. This is a winning day because I'm a day closer than I've ever been. Number four, winning is not the absence of mistakes, but it's the recognition of overcoming them. I'll say it again. Winning is not the absence of ever making a mistake, but it is learning to re the recognition and overcoming of them. Number five, finishers, the finisher's line always seems further away for those that are not enjoying the race. The winner's finish line is always further away for those that are not enjoying the race. Number six, Winning always includes crisis. You know, man, that, as we got ready, we had over 400,000 pounds of food, and it seemed like one after another, the truck was late, truck was too early, all kinds of things happened, and we're all going, is anything good going to come out of this? But let me tell you something. There's always going to be crisis. There's always going to be critics. There's always going to be this one. You know, we said... We advertised that if some cars run out of gas, we're going to put gas in their car. We had people here that almost had a full tank of gas. Hey, can I get some gas? <laughs> no, we're trying to help the car that runs out of gas put gas in it. And then they got mad. They're driving a brand new Lexus, and they had almost full tank of gas. They want to get gas. And they got mad and sped off. I'm thinking, listen, listen, we're here to make a difference and making a difference is the car that ran out of gas, the single mom with kids in the car. We made a difference in her life, right? She only had enough gas to get here. Did I give you number six? Winners always includes crisis. Winning always includes crisis. Number seven, success is discovering the ingredients that create a successful day then duplicating it on a regular basis. Success is learning to discover the ingredients that create a successful day, then learning to duplicate it on a regular basis. Number eight, the smallest step in the right direction always creates joy. You know, last night we was having to make the decision to cut the line off and not know, let nobody else on the parking lot. You know what? I looked at all those thousands of cars out there, and my heart was so grieved. We're running out of food. And I, at this point, didn't know how many people were fed. We felt like that had to be close to 10,000 already. But you know what? I was looking at all the people that could not get here, but I had to remember, look at the step we made. We may not have got to everybody, but we made a big difference. We made a huge step in the right direction. See, the smallest step in the right direction should always create joy. Number nine, the happiest moment towards that, success is always the happiest moment towards that which is always right. Make the decision to at least go forward, make movement towards what is always right. And number 10, any act of obedience shortens the distance to any miracle that you are pursuing. Just taking that step. You know, what if Peter would have never took the step out of the boat to walk to Jesus? There was 12 in the boat. Storm was coming. Jesus walked out on the water to them. Their boat was about to sh uh, sink. What if Jesus would have never commissioned Peter, Peter, come, get out of that boat. If Peter would have never took that step to Jesus, we'd have never seen anybody else walk on water but Jesus. But the Bible records that Peter started making steps to Jesus and started walking on water. And the only time he started to sink is when he took his eyes off Jesus and started paying attention to the storm again. You know, the only thing that stops people from making a difference 
is when they pay attention to the problems in life. You know, the only thing that ever stops people from taking that step to be that difference maker at work, to be that difference maker in your neighborhood, to be that difference maker in your family is just taking that step. But what if it don't happen? What if I sink? What if nothing turns around? What if what is somebody going to say about me? What is people going to think about me? But here's what I want to submit to you today. What if they never say nothing about you? What if the very opposite of what's keeping you from taking that step, what if it never happens? What if they give them something to talk about? Even if they're talking negative, at least they're talking. <laughs> Listen, if no one's talking about you, something is wrong. No, no, no. People only talk about people that are doing something, trying something, trying to be a difference maker, trying to go somewhere. People that are standing still, no one talks about them. No one even recognizes them. They just ride right by. This. You know, cars follow fire trucks that don't follow ice trucks. People always want to be a part of where it's burning, where it's blazing. And you know what? That could be in you. But where do you begin to lead? Number one, you lead yourself. You can't lead nobody till you choose to lead yourself. Be that one that, you know what, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to start leading me. If I'm the only one that makes a difference to me, I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to start making a difference, even if I make a difference with my own self. Be that person because once you decide to make a difference with you, then you'll start making a difference with other people around you because people notice change. A lot of people don't like change, but when they see something change, they quickly pay attention. Something's different. Something's not. What's different about this? They're quick to notice change. Something that never changes is never noticed. If you want to be a difference maker, you've got to make decisions that react and cause change to take place because you'll be more effective when you start touching people and reaching out and causing change in people's life. In Jesus' name, can somebody say amen? Would you stand with me today as we pray today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity that we had. God, I thank you for the one on our right, the one on our left. God, I thank you that you've called us to be a difference maker. Lord, you said all things are possible to the believer. If we doubt, we're only going to go without, but if we believe... You said we'll receive. God, I believe who stands before me today in this room and who could be watching me online, you've placed difference makers here. Each one unique and special in their own way. Everyone has a different talent, a different craft, a different passion, but we all have the same purpose. And that is, Make a difference where we are. Make a difference where we go. Make a difference in our family. You may not be able to reach every family, but start with your family. Be that difference maker. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus over every person here today. 